So after yesterday's mock draft, I was saying to myself, you know, maybe I should just go hit up Marty McFly and go live with the Flintstones. Hey, at least they probably have mock drafts in the Flintstone era. They probably just call them like rock drafts or something like that. But nonetheless, sorry for the stupidity. It's like, oh my goodness, what am I going to do next? Name my YouTube channel after underwear? Wait a minute. You asked me to come say goodbye. Sayonara. It's G-sling, not G-string out there. If all you trying to make fun of me, I'm telling you, no, <laughs> go for it. But what's cool and what's going on? I hope you guys are having a really good day. We have three rounds that we're going to cover. So without any more turmoil or all those altercations, let's go ahead and dive right into this three-round mock draft. Starting off with the Jaguars, Travis Hunter. He is the best prospect in this draft, in my opinion. So he's going to give you help on offense and defense side of the ball. I view like he is a corner full-time, part-time receiver. You have Brian Thomas. You don't need a number one. Travis Hunter comes into that secondary, gives them that elite playmaker that they desperately need. Even though, like I said, they played actually okay in the secondary over these past couple of weeks. Hunter fills that void for the future. Shador Sanders. Gonna go ahead and bring prime time to New York City. Let's go. The bright lights, baby. That's what I'm talking about. But Shador Sanders gives you all that moxie that you're gonna need to succeed in New York. The question marks, will can Dion or will Dion allow Shador Sanders to go to New York? That's gonna be a big question. But for me personally, you're drafting the best quarterback on the board here. And I'm also trying to keep my rankings more in line with more consensus, okay? Maybe I'll do more of this, you know, my guys and stuff like that in other drafts. But for this one, I'm going to definitely be trying to go more off consensus boards and just in what I think is out there and what's going on with these drafts. Shador Sanders is really good. He is my, you know, I think he's a really good quarterback. And if you're just talking about who do I think is the best quarterback right now, I think Shador Sanders is the guy. Passing-wise, accuracy, he is just the dude. On to Tennessee. We're going Abdul Carter. Let's go get another pass rusher. Adds up some more juice and some more livelihood there in Tennessee, even though it's not been a bad thing for Tennessee, but I feel like for the future, Arden Key's getting a little bit older now. They could end up moving on from him. Harold Landry's getting a little bit older while he's still good. I think Abdul Carter adds some more oomph in that pass rush going on and on, and Abdul Carter is unbelievable. I think he's a top five pick in this draft. On to the Browns. They're taking their quarterback of the future, Cameron Ward. Cam Ward. And he is going to be the heir apparent for Deshaun Watson. They've just, I feel like they've got to move on. They got to go get their quarterback. Cam Ward's been electric this season. That arm talent that he has, the infrastructure or the uh, infrastructure, maybe the economy stuff's on my mind right now. But the impractical playmaking ability that he brings to the table is certainly really fun to watch. Got to clean up the decision making. That is a big thing for him for sure. And his pocket passing. Jalen Milrow, back to back quarterbacks off the board for the Raiders in this case. Let's go energize that offense. They need help. Their offense is stagnant. Jalen Milrow brings a dynamic threat on the ground as he develops as a pass or two. And they still have Gardner Minshew around, so it'll be a perfect situation. Gardner, you start early on. Jalen Milrow, you develop. You let him be the future. On to number six, Mason Graham, interior game wrecker. He's going to be that game wrecker that this, I mean, you got Christian Barmore, but just imagine that one, two tandem rebuilding this defensive line, having an elite defensive line that they've not had in a long time. Keon White as well in that defensive front. Now we go on to Air McMillan. The air is running thin, but it's running deep here now with McMillan, Olave, and Shahid. You get at tandem of three that is elite. We're still going to be looking at the quarterback position, but I figured let's change it up, maybe with the comments, and we'll see if Mickey, uh, Mickey Loomis is the GM after this season. But if he says, hey, we're not in rebuild mode, Maybe he goes after a different route. McMillan at this point, really good player available. Number eight, Will Johnson, cornerback, Michigan, the Wolverine coming over to the Jets. I would love this if we do lose DJ Reed, which would suck. But if we lose him, Will Johnson would be a seamless transition for a secondary that has played very, very uninspired. Let's put it that way over these uh, past few weeks since losing Robert Sala. Malachi Starks, safety, Georgia. This is something where you look at the future. They need help in that secondary. Xavier Woods, the free agent. They need a long-term replacement in that secondary. Malachi Starks, a plug-and-play guy, going to be a much-needed help in that secondary. And I will say, Michael Jackson's not been terrible. Maybe re resign him on the cheap. So certainly an option for the team. They still need to add to the cornerback room, and we can look to do that later on or in free agency. Will Campbell for the Miami Dolphins. Offensive line, offensive line. Oh, yeah, offensive line. That's where we're going. Will Campbell, plug him in. Probably in this case would be one of the guards. 
but he certainly would give you an emergency tackle case there for you. On to Luther Burden, the third receiver, Missouri, adds some more playmakers for Dak Prescott. Clearly, this team is even with Dak Prescott healthy, they were lacking playmakers, whether it's a Genty, whether it's a Burden, they need to add help for Dak Prescott. On to the Indianapolis Colts. Look, they don't really need any more playmakers, but Colston Loveland, this is something different. I wanted to shake it up, try something different. I do think Colston Loveland is worth a top 15 pick in this class. Same thing with Tyler Warren, both very much in that tight end one conversation. And I go back and forth on which one's one, which one's two. They're right there, 1A, 1B. Loveland is an absolute superstar in the making. And while you got some guys, Alec Ovaltree, you know, Will Mallory, I mean, Mo Ali Cox has been good this season. Colston Loveland gives you that number one, and they use tight ends as well. On to Kelvin Banks, junior tackle from, uh, from Texas, going over to the Bengals now. I view him as a guard. They can also play tackle. Like, I, I'm sure some teams are going to draft him as a tackle. You know, like some teams would want to draft him as a tackle, obviously. And you can definitely give him a shot at tackle position. Obviously, you got Amarius Mims. You still have Orlando Brown. He would be an emergency tackle in this case scenario, but I feel like you plug him into your guard position. It also helps elevate the run blocking as well. So maybe you don't have to have Joe Burrow throwing the ball 50 times or so, you know, even though obviously he can do that. But Kelvin Banks Jr. is going to help you out in the run game and in pass protection. On to James Pierce Jr., edge rusher, Tennessee for the Bucks. Self-explanatory. Let's get some more pass rush. Their interior is really good, and they've gotten some play out of Yaya Diaby and Joe Tryanchenko, who is a free agent but Pierce can elevate that room for the future. Drew Aller. You know Drew Aller. If you're you know, watching me, he's a my guy. I love Drew Aller. I think he could be the top quarterback that comes out of this class. If he does declare, he could come back very easily. But Aller has the skill set and the tools that remind me of Josh Allen. I'm not saying he's going to develop into Josh Allen, but he looks and plays a lot like what I watched at a Wyoming Josh Allen. So if he can get there, Seattle can develop him for a season behind Geno Smith. And then he ends up being that long-term quarterback for the team. Now, here's something different for you. Ashton Genty, the bolder running back from Boise State, should win the Heisman this year, in my opinion. He adds a different element to this team. And the Bears, they been looking for a good running back in a, in a hot minute. Take a little bit of pressure off Caleb Williams with a really good run game. And I get you, re- you signed DeAndre Swift to a three-year deal. Now, he is a bit of a slasher slash receiving back. Not to say Genty can't do that because he's an all-purpose three-down back. But you can get out of his contract, too, in 2026 if you wanted to. And I'm, look, you keep these two guys. You got Roshan Johnson as a change of pace back, Genty, and Swift. I mean, that's booming, man. And they've got draft picks to address the interior of the offensive line as well. So I don't feel like I'm forced to go after the guard position just because I think that we're going to be able to find a really good offensive lineman on day two on that interior. So there's a lot of different options. I really do like Genty. I think it'd be a fun little marriage for the Bears. Benjamin Morrison. I love Benjamin Morrison. He's falling just because of the end season and the injury, but I feel like he's going to be good to go for the training camp, and he is a superstar in the making. He is one of, I think he is the best man-to-man coverage corner in this entire draft. Let's go on to Derek Harmon, game wrecker for the Ducks. This guy, you just can't help but notice, this guy makes tons of plays every single game for the Ducks on that defense line. I mean, they got some stars there, Uyungle, Birch. But I think Harmon might end up. Be, I think he'll be the dra- highest drafted of all those guys with his talent, his size, six foot five, three hundred ten pounds. He can be that future for you know Javon Hargrave on that defensive line, getting a little bit younger. Of course, Malik Collins too is still there, but they're getting a little bit older on that front. On to Tyler Warren, tight end, going to the Broncos here. As I was saying earlier, it's one A one B with Colson Loveland. Tyler Warren can do a little bit of everything, so he can be this team's running back as well with Audric Estime. If you re-sign Javante Williams, you got Jaleel McLaughlin. But Warren gives him that tight end that I think Sean Payton is going to really want. Then we go on to Ty Leak Williams, defensive tackle, Ohio State. Gets a little underrated just because he doesn't have like the crazy pass rush tools that some of these other guys have, but he is a freaking good football player, and I will take that 10 out of 10 times over chasing upside. He's going to fit right into that defensive front. And you already got some studs on that defensive line. So it's not like you need, you know, elite crazy upside or anything. And Williams is going to get better production than people think too. And then Jalen Walker, edge rusher slash linebacker, Georgia Bulldog, going to add some more help. Keep him close to home here in this case scenario. Walker gets you with that disruptive force onto that defensive line. Dion Walker, another disruptive force. On for Kentucky, and he's going to head over to Arizona in this case scenario. Heads out west and adds to that big monster physical presence that is so difficult to block one-on-one. Get improve his leverage. Run game is going to be a big question for him, but he can be in a rotation early on, of course, with Justin Jones and Bilal Nichols. 
Then we go on to Walter Nolan, interior defensive line for the Chargers. They also get a little bolt of electricity on that defensive front. You look forward. I mean, Puna Ford needs to be re-signed. You got Otino Ogbonio, who's also not been bad for them. And they've got some players that, you know, they're getting, you know, decent play out of. Puna Ford, again, I think you got, you got to re-sign him. He's been looking really good. But Walter Nolan adds that extra element. He had a really, really nice rep, too, against Jared Wilson, the center at Georgia this week, where he just kind of swiped his hands and got right after the quarterback. Walter Nolan, really, really good prospect. And the athletic traits are going to get him drafted really high as well. Kenneth Grant. Dude, the defensive tackles are going, man, in this first round. Like, they are just running off the board. I just ran up all up in this, and I'm telling you, Kenneth, these defensive tackles are really good in this class. Kenneth Grant, the next one to go off the board. The big freak monster athlete. This guy's like, I don't know. He's like Jason Momoa meets uh, freaking Liam Neeson of an action movie or something. You know, something like that crazy. Like Liam Neeson's action ability with Jason Momoa's size. He is that dog on that Michigan other than Mason Graham. Of course, they've got some dogs on that Wolverine defensive line. But Grant adds a big monster in the middle for the pack attack. Nick Scorton falls right into the commander's hands. And yeah, they've got Dorrance Armstrong. And I will say that... um, What's his name's been playing lights out this season? Dante Fowler Jr. He's been getting after the quarterback. I'll tell you that. But look into the future. He's on a one-year contract. They could bring him back. But Nick Scordon adds another element and another pass rusher for the future. Why not? He's BPA too. Josh Connolly Jr. Tackle. Oregon. One of my guys in this class. Huge fan of Connolly. I've done a breakdown on him. I love his hands. And I have this soft hand. Oh, no. We're going to get to the commentator stuff out there. But Josh Connolly, man, he is so good. I don't know why people keep underrating this guy. I think he is going to be a steal for whoever gets Josh Connolly Jr. For the Ravens, you look at that offensive line. Left tackle of the future, if, especially if Ronnie Stanley isn't re-signed. Now, if he is re-signed, Josh Connolly can still play guard. I mean, some people are going to evaluate him as a guard. I view him as a tackle, but certainly can move him inside a guard early on in his career. I wouldn't have a problem with that. He is a going to be really, really nice for whoever gets him. Javon Revel, Jr., cornerback i kind of was slow on the junior part there but uh, revel jr adding that secondary piece for the pittsburgh steelers if you don't re- re-sign dante jackson joey porter jr i'm not ready to hit the you know the code red or anything like that just you know it, it is what it is had a bit of a rough week versus terry mclaurin but mclaurin is an elite receiver so there is what it is but revel adds some more juice into the fray let's go on to azalea thomas back-to-back corners going off the board and for the vikings with the defensive tackles off the board, I felt like, let's go ahead and get the best cornerback available. Azalea Thomas did a breakdown on him as well. I'm a really big fan of him, and he can be that press man, press zone corner. Certainly has all the traits, the athleticism ability. He has to work on his grabby tendencies and his run support, but he is going to be a coverage sticky machine. On to Mikel Williams. Very raw prospect and somebody that's going to have to just continue to get better, working and getting off blocks more consistently. However, he's got the traits. He's got the elite athleticism at his size that teams are going to covet. And with guys like Josh Sweat and Brandon Graham, Brandon Graham maybe being retired after the season possible, especially if they win the Super Bowl, and then Josh Sweat being a free agent, I think Mikael Williams at this point, a really nice player to take on that defensive front. Princely Umami Allen, he, he really has earned a first-round selection. This guy's been balling out. He was just destroying Ernest Green off the edge, could not answer his speed. And for the Bills, why not get another Vaughn Miller type of, you know, guy, right? Somebody with some juice that can develop. I mean, you got Javon Solomon, who certainly could be a nice situational DPR, but Umami Ellen adds some more juice in there with um, a Gregory Rousseau. And, and of course, you still have AJ Epinez, who's kind of like a base end. So I, I really think Umami Ellen at this point, BPA. Here's some other positions I'd look to target, possibly like corner and uh, maybe, you know, offensive line leader or something like that. But overall, I think Umami Ellen, just BPA at this point. I don't want to force any pick for the Bills who kind of have just BPA approach. You could look at receiver too, I guess, but I feel like they're in a good spot. We'll look at that maybe on a day two pick. Shamar Stewart, though, Lions, edge rusher slash somebody that can play in that John Kaminsky role for the team and get them some more talent. He's going to be the Darius Robinson, two of this class. He just moves so well. He's got a power profile that's going to work too and really, really solid prospect. He's going to be right there. I think he's certainly, for a team like Detroit, at the end of the first round, I think it makes a lot of sense, especially Aiden Hudson said if he's not quite ready, still going to add some more pass rush into the fryer. And then final pick of the first round, the Chiefs. I just said BPA. Even though receiver, I don't see them, per se, going receiver in the first round this year. But Emeka Buka, I just can't pass on one. He's Mr. Reliable. And even with DeAndre Hopkins, Xavier Worthy, Raji Rice getting healthy. Like, you can figure this out. And Mekabuka, too good not to take. So I, I just kind of took him here. Once again, I don't know if I see them going receiver in the actual draft. 
in the first round at least, maybe later, but certainly I still like Emeka Boogie. Just he's so good. On to round number two, Jonas Salvanaia, offensive guard. Well, formerly tackle. And I actually think he could play tackle too for this team. So I kind of just put O-line because he could be the right tackle of the future there. Don't, don't you know, rule that out. But he's somebody that can come in there, compete with Jermaine Illuminor, either be the right guard or the right tackle. And lo hopefully long-term right tackle. Then we go on to Tyler Booker. So we're a little, little bit of run on offensive line. But Booker, long-term replacement there for Brandon Sheriff. Josh Simmons, still on the board. Just comes down to the injury. That's really it. I think he could be a top 15 pick at Warren for the injury. But for the Browns, they luck right into this pick. You get your laugh tackle of the future after probably losing Jedrick Wills in this offseason. Dewan Jones can go back to right tackle. I mean, and Simmons does have right tackle experience. So if Jones, you want to keep him at left tackle, they could do that. Amorian Hampton. He is like, uh, you know, you got to get just John Gus Johnson on. Well, I think he does the Hilton commercials, but I guess they could work out the Hampton and Hilton sort of thing. Anyway, Raiders, go get themselves that running back that they desperately need, add some more juice into the running back room because they just don't have a whole ton. And I think Omari Hampton is more than likely one of the most well-rounded running backs in this class of contact balance, speed, burst, you know, pass catching ability, like just all that in his game. Cameron Williams, offensive tackle, the big freak, um, you know, maybe the Amarius Mims of this draft class. He is that going to be that dude, right? He's, I think he's a better athlete even than Amarius Mims is. He's a better mover than Mims is. He's got the power, too. So maybe he doesn't have the power that Mims have, but he's certainly right there, man. And I think he's got better hands than Mims did coming out. So Williams for the Titans, right tackle, plug and play. Now you got two beasts at the tackle position. Quinn Ewers, a quarterback from Texas, Hooker Morris. Had a good game this week, starting to go flee, get on the up and up as we head into the playoffs. That's going to be huge for him, whether he's a first rounder or a second rounder, in my opinion. He's got the tools to go in the first round, but the consistency has been a big thing with Ewers. But the talent is definitely there for the Saints. Let's go and take that chance. At least can develop behind Derek Carr for a season. Jihad Campbell, he is a freakazoid. He's going to probably get more snaps off the edge, too, now. So I'm excited to see that. He's he was rushing off the edge this week, looked really good. He's a great blitzer. If you put him up there, line him up in the B gap and stuff like that, he is going to be a menace for guards to have to deal with. He was making plays at the linebacker position. We could use somebody for C.J. Mosley into the future. We got Wyatt Millam here. Offensive line, going to move inside a guard for the Chicago Bears. He's been one of the best offensive linemen in the country. West Virginia Country Roads, they do it again. And Zach Frazier has proven to be one of the best offensive linemen in this past draft. And, I mean, it was really, I mean, in terms of interior players, probably. Wyatt Millam, hopefully he can do the same. Ariante, Ursary, tackle, Minnesota. He's got that immense size and frame. He's going to be the left tackle there for this New England Patriots team. Keep Drake May upright. Jade Barron, keep him in Texas. Hook him horns, and he's going to help that secondary out, which has been injured a lot. So that's been a big problem for them. Bland should be coming back hopefully soon, but... Barron coming into the slot. Now you got Barron in the slot. You got Bland and Diggs on the outside. Let's go on to LT Overton, edge rusher slash interior defensive lineman. I see him maybe moving inside. If nothing else, he takes like a Calais Campbell role for this team. He's getting older now. Maybe he ends up retiring. And I feel like that would be a little nice fit for the Miami Dolphins. JT Tuimolo, one of the most consistent, you know, maybe boring, you could say, but I like boring players. He just gets the job done every single week, and he is going to be able to fill into an NFL room day one. I have no doubt he's going to be a high-motor, high-effort football player. He drop him back into coverage, too, sometimes. He's going to be uber-versatile on that defensive front. JT2 and Mola. I just got to say his name again because it's so cool. Isaiah, speaking of cool, Isaiah Bond. Bond, Isaiah Bond. This was one of my favorite like falls in the draft for the Buccaneers who luck right into this. I know I live in Tam or close to Tampa now, but I live in you know a little west of Tampa. But anyway, Isaiah Bond is a stud. He's fallen just because the inconsistency I think is going to be a big thing when teams are evaluating, et cetera, is how they feel on that. But his speed, his uh, overall acceleration is just electric, man. It's going to be a problem as a deep threat. His hands are really, really good, too. He's not just a guy like, you know, oh, I'm speed. No, he can catch the football. On to Maxwell Harrison, Indianapolis Colts. Let's go bolster that secondary. We went a little different in the first round. Thought about Benjamin Morrison a lot, but again, I do it like every single you know time and whatnot. So hey, let's change it up. Maxwell Harrison in the second round. He's been a little banged up this season. Hopefully he should come back real soon. But he's got the coverage traits. He's got the athleticism that you look for. He could be a first rounder if he put it together and you know had more tape this year. But nonetheless, he's still a guy that is on day two firmly at this point with his coverage instincts and his playmaking ability. Mike Green, edge rusher, 
Marshall, Marshall, Marshall. And I want to be quiet with this guy because he's going to start catching on here real soon. I'm telling you, Mike Green is a superstar in the making. This guy, you know, even though his size is what, six foot four, two forty five, he has the arm length and he can hold up. Every time I saw him, Ohio State, Virginia Tech going up against stronger guys, he had no problem holding up in the run game. I'm not saying he's going to be an elite run defender, but man, he's not that bad. And he is going to be a really good pass rusher, man. He's got some good pass rush moves too. He's got a really nice spin move and some swipes and counters and stuff like that. He is going to be an electric guy to go on, maybe be somebody, add some more juice into the room with Montez Sweat and, and you know, et cetera on that front and with Demarcus Walker and, and whatnot. So yeah, why not add some more pass rush? Marcus Bow, offensive line, plays right tackle at Purdue, but I could project him inside a guard just because I don't think he's got an immense size profile. That's going to be something we'll have to see at the combine. But he has overall decent movement skills as well. I mean, he definitely can get out in space. Like, he's got some really, really good movement skills at the second level. So that's something I'm not worried about him with him at all. We'll see about that size checkbox, but he could fill into that right tackle mold if they have injuries, which they've had plenty of injuries at the right tackle position. He could also compete with Christian Haynes. I want to make sure we figure out that right right, right side for the team. And then we go on to Evan Stewart. This was just BPA. You know how much I love Evan Stewart. I'm a Ducks fan, so there's a little bit of bias there. I think he's just being underutilized. But when he is utilized, he's insane. Okay, he is one of the best receivers in the country, in my opinion, talent-wise. And for the Panthers, add another weapon in with Xavier Leggett. They've got a lot of free agents. Let's go on to Parker Brailsford Center for the 49ers. Get that long-term Jake Brendel replacement. Great movement skills. He's put on a little bit more size this year. He's really strong, and he doesn't really get ball rushed a whole time. I mean, he's not going to be crazy, but you get this guy in the move and some pulls, he's going to be dangerous. Dangerous. Speaking of dangerous, Quinshawn Judkins. He's really dangerous. Don't, don't trade him. You got to wrap up when you're trying to, when you're trying to tackle Quinshawn Judkins. But for the revolt, uh, the Denver Broncos, let's add another, you know, run, you know, guy that can come in there and, and help out Bo Nix in the run game. You get yourself an elite duo with Jaleel McLaughlin. You got uh, Audric Estime as a change of pace back if you can work on his fumbling a little bit. But man, I think it's a really, really good Group of running backs in for the, the Denver Broncos. We added a pass catcher with Tyler Warren in the first round, trying to do whatever we can to help out Bo Nix. Takario Davis, cornerback, Arizona. He's going to certainly be that number two guy. It also, it doesn't kick the can on Clark Phillips, but maybe he can roll into the slot possibly for the future as he continues to get stronger run support. So it's certainly an option, but I feel like A.J. Terrell, Takario Davis, and Clark Phillips gives you that tandem of three. Dylan Fairchild, one of my guys in the class. I'm a huge fan of Dylan Fairchild. He did an exceptional go- job going against Walter Nolan. And not every single snap, but when he did go up against him, he really shut him down. He was the one guy that was able to shut him down, and he did a great job in general in that old Miss defensive line. I feel like he was very, very clean, and he's very powerful. His hands, man, he's got that strike. Just hits you, and it pops you back, man. Pop me back just thinking about it. But for the Cardinals, you got both your uh, starting guards being free agents. And they did draft um, Isaiah Adams, but, you know, add more help into the fuel. And he could also be a center for the future, too, uh, for Hoya at Fort. Travion Henderson, running back, add more juice, right? And just in case, I mean, I'm saying Joe Mixon's been a beast for them. However, one-two punch for Damian Pierce, who, you know, they've kind of, you know, worked in and out still. He's been a good special teamer for them, certainly. But Henderson can be a really good complimentary for the future for, um, for Joe Mixon. Then we go on to Davidson Igbenosin. He has been super sticky, but you got to be careful. The one knock and why he's not a first rounder is just because of the hands. He's really, really grabby. All right, so that can get him into trouble. But for the Packers, it could be that Eric Stokes replacement. On to the Bolts. I'm going to John and Michael Galenborg, one of my guys. Galenborg, I love his name. And it's not just the name. He is going to be a great pass catching weapon. And he gets a little bit stronger. He's going to be also a good in-line blocker, too, I feel like. He's got the potential. He's not great as a blocker right now. That's definitely his biggest weakness. But he has the potential to be a, a better blocker. And that's okay. I want him to be a good receiver because he kind of moves a little like Travis Kelsey. Kamari Ramsey, DB. They need secondary help. I think Marcus Williams may be his last year on for the, for the Baltimore Ravens. So Kamari Ramsey, really good coverage shields. He needs to clean up some of his run support angles. But he is really good in the back end, which is what they need in those coverage busts. Elik Ayumana, receiver, going to the Commanders, add a perfect vertical stretching playmaker in for Jaden Daniels. I think it's a perfect addition for his skill set as well with his vertical speed. And they just don't really get the ball. They don't feature him as much as really I think Elik Ayumana could be, right? The quarterback situation is you know, a little rocky at times in that Stanford offense. But Elik Ayumana, the potential he brings to the table, hopefully can be another steal like Terry McLaurin was on day two. Mansoor Delane, cornerback, got the athleticism. 
just a little inconsistent with his coverage. I think in, in general with his backpedal and stuff needs to work on that. But for the Buffalo Bills, long term, get that Takario, I'm uh, not Takario Davis, but get the uh, Rajul Douglas replaced. And that was kind of my comp for him. But anyway, Masur Delane, get another help at cornerback. Nick Singleton, running back, Penn State. He is so electric as a running back. And if they do lose Najee Harris, I mean, you got Jalen Warren, of course, but he's also a free agent. So you got to think about that. Nick Singleton with his athleticism and his burst, man, it is insane stuff. And I think he's going to be a really, really nice ad for this Pittsburgh Steeler team that can really run the ball with Arthur Smith. And you got some weapons, obviously, in Russell Wilson cooking right now. Blake Miller going to be offensive tackle, right tackle to develop for the future. Behind Lane Train Johnson. Let's go on to the next one, Xavier Restrepo. Just a BPA approach again for the Bills. I get it. You know, this is not a receiving core that's terrible by any strip of the mean. And this is definitely not me trying to replace Khalil Shakur. It could be Shakur, but Shakir. But, you know, I just think Restrepo adds another weapon into the room, maybe long-term for, for Curtis Samuel, in, in other words. But now you got Keon Coleman, you got Restrepo, and you got Shakir, and then Kincaid. You got a little bit of everything there for the uh, Buffalo Bills. Gray Sabell, North Dakota State offensive tackle plays left tackle to see he's played literally like every single position I think he projects best inside the guard but with his movement skills and the way he's played this season at North Dakota State the bison they continue to prove that they can produce good offense alignment this is the next guy in line for that he has been exceptional this season for the Detroit Lions fills one of those guard positions final pick of the second round the godfather let's finish it up on the offer we can't refuse Dante Coleone is an offer I can't refuse Gets that guy next to Christian Chris Jones that they've been looking for for a very long time. He is so difficult. He's got that lateral agility you look for as a run defender. Final round of the draft. And we're starting off with a banger. Nick Emanwari. Safety that's been so good there for South Carolina this year. Making plays. He's sticky on tight ends. He's going to be that Antonio Johnson. At least add more help for him. Okay, That's what I feel like they need. Emanwari will certainly do that. And also, I have a uh, pick, the picks below here, if you want to see the previous picks as well. On to the G-Men, and I was saying to myself, hmm, how can we make this better? Let's get another Sanders, TJ Sanders. He's going to be that sexy, dexy, long-term one-two punch with his athletic burst and ability to get after the passer. Oh, it's going to be a problem, man. And he can disrupt, too, as a run defender, get in the backfield quick. Raiders, I'm going Jabbar Muhammad. Jack Jones kind of struggled this year, as a, especially as attacker, but Jamar Muhammad adds another playmaker in that back end, in that secondary, especially with some of the free agents that they have. If they don't re-sign Nate Hobbs, then Jabbar Muhammad also can help them out there. Yeah, I mean, Jakari and Bennett's come along this season, so you certainly have one guy with some physical nature. I think Muhammad would be a really nice one with his twitchiness, really heads into that room. Harold Fanning Jr. Look, I know it's unfair, but we're adding offense. Even though there's some areas on defense, I was thinking about corner two as a possibility, and I could see that, especially in the first round, low key. But Harold Fanning Jr. at this point can be a nice developmental guy behind Travis Kelsey with his receiving ability and the way that Andy Reid's going to be able to use him and get the ball in his hands, his yak ability. Oh, man, forget about it. You still got Noah Gray, too. But I mean, yeah, they like to use tight ends. Caleb Johnson, just kind of an all round. He's just really good there at Iowa. He's got. Another dude's got really good contact balance, some solid power, solid speed. There's not a whole ton of kinks to his game. Cleveland, go get themselves somebody in that running back room. Even if you re-sign Nick Chubb, you're going to need some more help in the room. Trey Harris, really good outside receiver for the Raiders, adding some more help. Jacoby Myers can also move back inside if they need him to, but Harris gets another guy who with some ball skills on the outside. On to Josiah Stewart, edge rusher, bringing some juice into Carolina. No, we haven't selected a pass rusher. It's something we def- desperately need. But I felt like let's go a different route. And I, I said Malachi Starks was something I haven't done for this Carolina Panther team. They need secondary help. They need back end help. And I felt like that would be a nice pick too. But Josiah Stewart, really good option here if they do miss out some of the edge rushers to get some more juice as a pass rusher. Jack Sawyer. He is too good not to take at this point for the New England Patriots. I'm just rebuilding the defensive line. I know they could add another weapon in here, but maybe they get T. Higgins in free agency. Remember, they've got the most money in free agency, so you have to try to uh, project some of those things. It's always hard to do, but Jack Sawyer, really solid edge rush. I don't think he's got an elite upside or anything like that, but I think he's got a really high floor. For the New Orleans Saints, Landon Jackson. He's a big, physical, Preston Smith cloth type of mold edge rusher for this New Orleans Saints team with his physical traits. He's going to go through you. He's that he's not going to, you know, maneuver around you all the time, right? He's a little stiff, but man, he's got some power and he's got a long, long frame that's going to get disruptive and get that Cam Jordan replacement of the future. And Jeannie Cornelius, right tackle at Oregon. He's been a rock for the Ducks this season. And 
He's not the you know quickest of feet guy, but I feel like he's got enough juice to hang a tackle. His length is going to be the biggest question mark. But if you're thinking a guy that you know could also move inside the guard if you needed him to, but he is somebody that could develop behind Andrew Wiley for a season and hopefully be that long-term right tackle, at least get more depth in that room. Let's go on to Alfred Collins. He's that run defender that this Cowboys team desperately, desperately, desperately needs as I can get closer for you if you need me to <laughs> emphasize a little bit more. But yeah, he's going to be a really, really nice run defender. He's that prototypical size and strong hand guy. On it to Barrett Carter, add some more coverage chops in that linebacker room, which has been a little strugglesome for the Bucks this season. They've got a lot of free agents. Savachi Dennis also been a little injured. Uh, Levante David could end up retiring after the season. Who knows, right? So those are all question marks for me. Barrett gets that one-two punch with Savachi Dennis. We go on to Xavier Watts, add more DB help. We're adding back-to-back cornerback and then secondary help with Xavier Watts, especially if you don't end up re-signing Julian Blackman. On to the Bengals, Jaden Higgins. Get you some more size. If you lose T. T Higgins, he's going to be somebody. He's got really good, somewhat athleticism. He's got decent bursts as well, especially for his size. He's probably going to run like low four fives, maybe even four fours. You never know. I've heard he could run four fours. So we'll keep an eye on that. But a really good athlete and has a nice solid catch radius to him with his size. Jake Brinningstool, really good developmental tight end behind Noah Fant for a season. And he's also going to play early on. Like he's he's definitely somebody that's going to, with his vertical speed and ability to separate first linebackers on an ease, and he's too big for a safety to cover at six foot five, six foot six. He's going to be a mismatch nightmare. And for Seattle, get another weapon in that tight end room. Andrew Mukaba, a lot of Texas hook em horns going off the board here. Mukaba, unfortunately, you know, got injured, but he's been back. So he has been really, really dynamic as a playmaker this season and moving to more of a safety role has benefited him tremendously his ball skills like I never worried about his ball skills even when he was playing in the slot for Clemson he just sometimes with his, his footwork was a little bit of a mess but he looks so much more comfortable with his eyes on the quarterback and stuff like that but he can definitely line up in the slot too but he'll be that long term a guy with um with Jaquan Brisker and a good playmaker Orlande Gatston the tight end slash wide receiver for the Syracuse um Big orange, should I say, right? I was trying to think, well, wait, big, big, big orange, but uh, Orlando Gadsden, he has been a dynamic receiver for Syracuse. And now he's not a great athlete, but he is a really, really deceptive route runner. And he's got really good lateral agility. So he's got that deceptiveness to be able to kind of shake you, especially at the vertical stem, at the top of the stem, where it's just hard to cover, all right? Even though he doesn't have crazy burst, but if you have good timing like Stafford has to trust his playmakers, Orlando Gadsden fits, and he's going to need somebody like that for sure. And I think Stafford would be a really good fit with him. But a very, very good, solid route runner. We go on Denzel Burke, cornerback. The Ohio State University. At this point, just too good not to take. I mean, he's got the traits. I know he had a bad Oregon game, but he has bounced back. And he's been really solid. He's got the, like I said, he's got the athleticism. And he is somebody that certainly can add another piece into the secondary if you end up losing Javarius Ward in this offseason. Hopefully they re-sign Demari, uh, Demari Dora Lenore and obviously you still have Renardo Green. But Burke gets at that third corner in the room. Let's go on to Billy Bowman Jr. here for the Denver Broncos. Maybe that long-term P.J. Locke replacement. So you have Brandon Jones. Now you add in Billy Bowman Jr. to be that, no, or that number two guy. Dante, Deontay Lawson, linebacker, Alabama. He has been exceptional at Alabama this season as the green dot guy. Jihad Campbell, of course, has been really good too. But Lawson, with his IQ and overall football understanding, is going to be huge for this Cardinal team, which is something that they really need, right? So you got some young guys and whatnot. We know Owen Popo, but I feel like Lawson can really help out that room. We go on to Armin Mbembo from uh, Missouri, the right tackle. I think he ends up moving inside the guard at the next level, but he could be an emergency swing tackle for the team. Certainly adds more competition on the interior of that offensive line for the Houston Texans, which has been a little shaky for the team protecting CJ Stroud. On to the New England Patriots. We're adding another weapon and a home run with Jalen Royals. I know that's pretty corny, but anyway, I'm pretty corny as it is. Jalen Royals, though, with his vertical speed, and not just vertical speed, like he's got some twitch, man. He can run routes as well. It's unfortunate he had this season any which doesn't look to be anything serious or anything like that. So he should be ready to go by training camp. He's a oh, man. If it weren't for the injury, though, he would easily eclipse a thousand yard plus mark. So Royals really underrated, I think, at this point. Tate Radlich, offensive guard, can be a plug and play right guard. They need help on that interior pass protecting for the team. Like they've really struggled on that interior. So they got to step up. They need a center too, I think, for the future. Like Bradley Boozman probably on the way out. So between center, guard, I just feel like Radlage was a BPA at this point. Maybe you think about Jared Wilson as well. So those are a couple of options at the center position. No matter what, though, they need to think about that. Clay Webb could be a good option, too, depending on how he does at the senior ball process because he could also play center for the team. 
Kyle Kennard, too good at this point not to take. He's had an exceptional season with his speed on the, on the edge. Maybe not the most bendy guy, but he has got some tools. He's got some good hands getting and disrupting blocks, adding in some more juice with losing Preston Smith. Mason Taylor, keep him in Louisiana, New Orleans, get themselves a tight end of the future. Can learn. If you keep Taysom Hill for a season, fine, but I think he'd be a, a nice upgrade in the room long haul. Jordan Birch, get more depth. Roderick Washington, getting a little bit old, or not older, but he's the only guy on there besides Matabuki. I mean, you got your nose tackle with Travis Jones, who's really good, and obviously Matabuki's really good, but they use those three defense alignments. So get some more depth with Broderick Washington. Jordan Birch can play a little inside out and be that defensive end. He's got that size profile, and he's got almost 33-inch arms verified, big-time size, almost 300 pounds. He's been so good at Oregon, too. I love him as a Ducks fan. Omar Norman Lott, interior defensive line from Tennessee. Another situation where you got to think about this for the future with Larry Ogunjobi. So add another pass rush. He's been so good with one-on-one reps, very hard. Any matchup you watch him this season, he's been very, very hard to block one-on-one. He's got really good lateral agility. Cayman Rucker going to add some more depth for the Jaguars, which is what they need, right? They've got their two superstars, but they need a little bit of depth. Cayman Rucker can do that off the edge. And with he's been falling out, just comes down to the size. Not all teams are going to be willing to take a chance on him with that six foot one, 245 frame. Luke Lachey, tight end, Iowa. You know, it's Iowa tight end. What else do I need to say? But for the Philadelphia Eagles, you know, they typically try to draft tight ends at this point where they're at with tight ends and Dallas Goddard, even though Goddard's a piece, but Luke Lachey can be a developmental piece for a season or two. And you go from there. On to Kobe Bryant and the Mamba in this case, but obviously all homage to the Mamba. But Kobe Bryant here, Kansas corner. He's had a phenomenal season. He's a little razor thin, but he can be a nice developmental guy behind Martin Emerson for a season, get a little stronger. He's got the coverage skills, and he has been so good picking plays off this season. And throughout his career, too, he's been a ball hawk. Terrence Ferguson, tight end, Oregon, another duck player. As you can tell, my Oregon bias is coming out for the Jets in this case scenario, but Ferguson has been exceptional. He's been very reliable for Dylan Gabriel. And he's also a solid blocker. He's not an elite blocker by any means, but he's definitely a willing blocker. Jason Marshall, 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 and go ahead and get another cornerback in at this point. I figure we should have gone earlier probably, but with the way the board worked out, I went I went out and got Marshall here at this point. And they've got some guys. Obviously, Watson's been good and Williams and whatnot, but Marshall can certainly develop in there, give him some more depth for the future. I love the way he's played to this season. He's had a bounce back. And even though last, so let's see, week eight was it versus Kentucky, I watched that game. He got beat once, but I didn't think it was his fault. I really didn't think it was his fault at all. So a PFF kind of had lower stats on him, but I didn't think it was his fault, really. And it was also like a, I believe it was a flea flicker too. So it was kind of a lot of things. It wasn't completely on him. Jonah Coleman, been a underrated running back in this class. He's so powerful. He's got that five to 10 yard burst you need as well. And certainly, if nothing else, can be a motor singletary in the NFL. For the Minnesota Vikings, if you lose Aaron Jones, or just need more depth for Jones, especially at this point, you know, dealing with injuries and stuff like that, Jonah Coleman can be a really good one-two punch. On to the Dolphins and their two picks. Danny Studsman, who's a stud. And he's going to add a nice linebacker tackling machine to go along with Jordan Brooks and his speed and athleticism. A nice little one-two punch where I feel like Studsman struggled a little bit in coverage. I mean, sorry, yeah, and struggled in coverage. I think Gordon Jordan Brooks can do that element. Studsman can be that tackling machine early on in his career as he develops. Jeremiah Coor, you're talking about a stud as a coverage guy. Jeremiah Coor has one of the highest, he's one of the highest instinctual safeties in this class, in my opinion, with Xavier Watts too, but he just has a knack for the football. So while he may not have the size profile that a lot of teams are going to look for, and that's why he falls to this point, he is a coverage instinct machine. So it'll be a nice little compliment with Javon Holland. Jack Nelson adds more tackle, especially if you end up, which I, I really think they're going to end up re-signing Aldrick Jackson. But thinking about the future, for Rob Havenstein or getting more depth for injuries, which they've had. Jack Nelson can certainly do that. They love the Wisconsin offensive lineman. And in his own right, Jack Nelson, I feel like, is underrated. Really, really improved his game. And I love the way he moves out of his stance. Final pick of the draft, Gunner Helm. Tight end, Texas. Hook em horns. Another one off the board here. He's going to be a great development tight end behind uh, George Kittle for a couple seasons. And he's got the athletic traits you look for. He's been so good this season at Texas. Being a nice, reliable weapon for Quinn Ewers. And certainly with the profile, he has time to develop here and be a really, really nice tight end. Give them some depth early on because they're very thin. Kittle's the only guy under contract after this next season. Well, that's going to do it here for this mock draft. Let me know what you think. Agree or disagree? Hey, always hit me where it hurts, man. I have no problem. Let's let's bring the punches on. Hope you guys have a really cool day, though. My name is G-Sling. I'm doing my thing. I'll talk to you here later.